morning. It is Monday, October 11th. I'm Danielle Wiggins with your 3 News Now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook and YouTube pages. OK, let's start with Holly Strano, who is tracking a fabulous forecast. Thank you, Danielle. And as we take a look at this warm Monday, we're going to talk highs in the upper 70s and low 80s this afternoon. Partly sunny skies. Unbelievable for this time of the year. Record high today is 86 at Hopkins. We are not far from that. That is for sure. Getting into more mild weather overnight and into the start of your Tuesday. We're still in the 60s. We are going to see another day tomorrow filled with just partly sunny skies and warm weather. Shower chances tomorrow less than 20% and getting into Wednesday it's looking very similar before we start to see an increase in those rain chances as we head into Thursday. In the meantime, nah, -uh, not today. Low 80s, partly to mostly sunny, very warm, a nice little breeze out of the south and southeast from 10 to 15 miles an hour sustained. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for that matter, we're going to be in the mid to upper 70s. Like I said, just isolated shower chances next couple of days. Better chances for some scattered showers and storms later on Thursday. And then Friday we'll have some showers, cooling it off to autumn, finally heading into this weekend. We should be in the 60s for highs. Saturday looks like we'll see some of that leftover rain, but Sunday is looking dry just in time for the Browns game. Danielle, back to you. Thank you so much, Holly. And speaking of the Browns, well, the team, they are three and two after a loss in L.A. Sunday afternoon. And Baker Mayfield addressed the multiple injuries on defense and the controversial calls from the refs. Might as well just forward the fine letter. Uh, we asked the ref on the sideline how the hell he missed that call. I mean, they're shoving Donovan Peoples-Jones out of bounds and then Higgy gets grabbed. So there's two P.I.s on one play. Uh, they don't call it. I mean, but we shouldn't have even been in that position. Like I said, left too many points in the field uh, first half. But it's, it's very frustrating when, you know, we didn't do our job enough to, uh, you know, to just take the ball game away and we left it in the hands of somebody else. So we got to be better on that. Yeah, and they have another chance to do it this Sunday because the Browns take on the undefeated Arizona Cardinals. And remember, that game is at home and it starts at four. Well, let's turn to COVID-19 news now because the rollout of booster shots is underway in Cleveland. They were administered at the VA over the weekend, and there is another chance to get one tomorrow. The Cuyahoga County Board of Health will host a Pfizer booster clinic from 930 until 330 at the Word Church in Warrensville Heights. Registration is open and you can sign up online or just give them a call. In Shaker Heights, the school district will vote on Tuesday about a proposed vaccine mandate. This has been an issue of contention for some time now. If approved, the policy will require all school district employees and volunteers to submit proof of vaccination to human resources. And this morning, there are several new features to improve kids' safety on Facebook and Instagram. This past week, a whistleblower testified that the social media giant was not paying attention to the well-being of teens. So Facebook introduced things like prompting teens to take a break every so often and nudging teens if they're repeatedly looking at content that could be harmful. It's go time now and a shooting early Sunday inside a Minnesota bar has left one person dead and more than a dozen others injured. This story tops our national headlines. A woman in her 20s died and 14 others were taken to area hospitals for treatment in St. Paul. So far, police have arrested three men involved in the shooting. They are being treated at the hospital and will be booked into custody to await a charging decision once they are discharged from the hospital. Police say it is too soon to know a motive. Southwest Airlines continue to see several cancellations and delays, so the issues began Friday. So you're looking at the Southwest Terminal in Dallas Sunday. Southwest canceled more than 1,800 flights over the weekend, with more than 1,000 just yesterday. The airliner has blamed weather and a delay in an FAA-imposed air traffic management program for the issues. They say staffing is not to blame. That was a big one. 
A 6.2 magnitude earthquake struck on the southern tip of Hawaii Island Sunday. This happened just before noon. Residents across all the islands of Hawaii, including Waikiki, say they felt the quake. Officials said the earthquake did not impact any nearby volcanic eruption or cause major damage. And William Shatner's space experience is going to be slightly delayed. We recently told you about his opportunity to board Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. It was scheduled for takeoff tomorrow, but because of weather, that will be pushed back to Wednesday. Shatner's flight will last just 10 minutes and reach no higher than about 66 miles. Alrighty, well today the Boston Marathon is kicking off and it already has. Now this is the first Boston Marathon ever to be held in the fall. The field was reduced by about 40%, meaning only about 20,000 runners instead of over 31,000. Every runner was required to be vaccinated or take a COVID-19 test before being allowed to compete. Participants were also required to wear a mask when attending indoor marathon venues and while on race day buses. So we are sticking with the Boston Marathon because in the best news that you'll hear all day, an Avon Lake City Schools employees is one of the runners in the marathon. She is 45 year old Julia Lopak. Here is a photo of Julia with her super supportive staff. Julia raised funds through the South Boston Neighborhood House to be able to run in the historic marathon. OK, so get this. She also ran in the Chicago and New York marathons. So congratulations to her. And speaking of teachers, starting today, teachers, school staff and administrators can get a free breakfast from McDonald's. The restaurant chain is calling it a thank you meal and it will feature items from their breakfast menu. It's being offered through Friday and teachers can get the free meal by showing a valid work ID. The meals come in a happy meal box, of course, but instead of a toy, <laughs> it includes a thank you note. So we do want to say thank you to all of our teachers out there. We definitely appreciate you. And I want to thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Danielle Wiggins and I'll see you Tuesday morning on go starting at 4 30 a.m. Have a great week everybody and keep on persevering.